Well, the A's 2021 season has come to an end. They're out of playoff contention. It's time for eulogy, you guys. Let's get into it. You are locked on A's. Your daily Oakland A's podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. How's it going, A's fans, and welcome to episode 358 of the Locked On A's podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, noted baseball fan, Jason Burke, and on today's episode, I give you my thoughts on the A's 2021 season. There's still three games left, but the A's are out of it, so what were my takeaways now that they're out of playoff contention? Uh, I'm going to go over Frankie Montas and his AL Cy Young candidacy because he's been Really, really good all season, especially in the second half. So that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, And then in the third segment, in case you still like baseball, I'm going to give you guys some updates on uh, what's going on there. Like where the Mariners are. Do they still have a chance at winning the AL West? By me saying that that is a question, that means, yes, they do. They do. What needs to happen for them to win the AL West? That would be shocking. That's now what I'm rooting for, I think. Uh, I know that we should probably dislike the Mariners after losing 12 straight to them uh, and, you know, them basically single-handedly eliminating the A's from playoff contention over the last couple of weeks. But, uh, you know, they're still the Mariners, and uh, they, they haven't made the playoffs in 20 years. So if they somehow shocked the world, I wouldn't be that mad. And also, it wouldn't be the Astros. So that's something. Yeah. Um, also, thank you so much for making this your first listen of the day. Uh, I, I know that the season is over, quote unquote, but we are here for you guys every day. I've said it a couple times this week. The schedule basically for the remainder of this season and going up until the, uh, the not the trade deadline, the, the December thing, the winter meetings, that's the one. Uh, up until that point in time, we're basically five days a week five days a week, every week. And then right around that time, we'll probably be going down to three, scaling back a little bit up until spring training starts. So, you know, you got the the second, the holiday season, uh, and then you got uh, January, and then basically February, we're back. So a month and a half of, you know, three days a week as opposed to five. And that's what you guys got to look forward to. So make this your first lesson. Thank you to those who already do. Thank you to uh, the person who said on our YouTube page, thank you for being my first listen. That's awesome. I thoroughly appreciate that. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page, uh, channel, YouTube channel. And uh, if you're on YouTube already, make sure to like, subscribe, do all the things that you need to down here. Follow me at uh, that wrong finger at by Jason B right over there. Uh, you can also follow the podcast wherever you like to hear podcasts. We're free and easy wherever you like podcasts. Uh, you can follow us at on social media, on Twitter and Instagram at by Jason B uh, or that's in the Spotify Green Room app as well. And uh, Locked On A's on Twitter and Instagram for the show. And if you guys have any questions for us, please on those two, LockedOnAthletics, gmail.com. But let's get into my eulogy for the 2021 season. And it's not really a eulogy. It's mostly some of my takeaways from the 2021 season. And I want to get these right. So I got a bunch of bullet points. I'm going to read through some of them. So if you're watching, I apologize. Uh, eye contact, it's going to be terrible. But Know, know that I still see you. I still hear you. <laughs> For those that are listening, just uh, forget the last five seconds. So obviously, it's a disappointing end for the A's in 2021. Uh, but if we're being honest, we all kind of figured that this team didn't necessarily have it. For me, I was kind of hoping that they would put it all together and then just catch fire, you know, like the Cardinals did. Uh, that's what I was kind of envisioning for or hoping for for 2021 because this team has some pieces, and I'll get to those guys here in just a minute, but they, they've got some pieces that are very, very solid and look like they could do some damage in the playoffs if they made it that far. But, I mean, if we're being honest, it's kind of a matter of time. There, you could point to one of probably three incidents in recent A's game history. Uh, you got the two walk-offs against the Giants that just melted the bullpen down to metal and they were just ineffective basically the rest of the season. Uh, That's one. Uh, You got Chris Bassett in Chicago getting hit in the head. That, that seemed like a big blow. It ended up being a big blow. And then you had the, the sweep at the hands of the Toronto Blue Jays in Toronto at the beginning of this month. And uh, 
take your pick. Which one of those ended the A season? Uh, let me know in the comments, I guess. <laughs> Or don't. Uh, yeah, it, it's been a rough go since roughly the middle of August. Or I guess it, the August 23rd game, I think, is what it was against the Giants. Uh, don't quote me on that. But anyways, I stayed optimistic. One, because it's way more fun for me to enjoy the team that I'm watching. Regardless of what my, my heart tells me uh, or my brain tells me, I wanted to have fun. And that's part of what I like to try to do with me. I like to give you good analysis and I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat what you're seeing on the field what you see is what you see but i also want you to be excited about the product because we know that this team has great pieces they got well great might be an overstatement for matt chapman at the plate but defensively he's great and then you got uh al mvp candidate matt olson he's been great uh chris bassett sean Manaya, who's been mostly great outside of August, and then Frankie Montas. Uh, we're going to talk about his Cy Young candidacy pretty soon. That's five really, really good players. They have pieces, and I wanted you to be excited about them. That is something that I try to do with just any time that I talk about baseball. I want to grow the game, but not through like, oh, look at these hot takes. I want to No, I want to inform people. I want to have people be excited with me about baseball, and that's what I try to do. So that's one reason why uh, I was a little bit probably overly optimistic at times. Uh, also, it's hard for me to judge this team because I can't judge with my heart. Uh, I had a good read on the Mariners coming into the season. I didn't say they'd be in uh, contention for the ALS, but I was like, yeah, they might be 500. And maybe if a couple things break right for them, they might actually be an outside contender for a wild card spot. I don't remember where I said that. I said it to somebody. I think it was Sully on Lockdown MLB. I have listened back, haven't heard it, but I said it to somebody on somebody's podcast. And uh, if you if you remember me saying that, please let me know where, because I want to run that audio so bad. But I I haven't been able to find it. I, I've tried a couple of different ones. I haven't found it. But the Mariners, they're good. They're good. That's all. Um, also, I said that the Yankees would suck, and the Yankees didn't win the division. But and they might also miss the playoffs. We'll, we'll see. We'll get into that in the third segment. But uh, number two, uh, I know that I said number one a while ago, but the other reason that I was optimistic is it could be a very, very cold winter for the Oakland days. And I just wanted to enjoy this run as, as long as I could. Um, I know that it might not be their best shot, but they had a, a good shot. And if you account for all of these wild losses, to, the same losses, I guess they weren't wild. They lost four to two or three to four one or two run games to the Seattle Mariners for almost two weeks, it, essentially 12 games, two weeks, whatever you want to call it. All of those, all of the bullpen meltdowns, they still, ha they have 85 wins right now. They could have theoretically had 95, maybe. And this is without Marcus, without Liam. They were still a pretty good, well-constructed team. They just did not get it done at the end of the day. And the other thing that I'm just frustrated about, it's not the blown losses. It's not, the A's falling short and missing the playoffs. It's that ownership didn't invest in them during the off season. That's what frustrates me. And you could say it's Liam, it's Marcus, it's whatever. They didn't, whether or not you let those guys go, they didn't get anybody else to actually replace them. They looked good on paper. Trevor Rosenthal, that injury, that, that sucked. And obviously you'd love to spend that money somewhere else. I'm not mad at them for getting injured though. Injuries happen. And if you look at it, the A's didn't have that many. They had some, Big key injuries at bad times, but they're starting a rotation basically for the same guys the entire season. The entire season. You know how many other uh, other other staffs have four qualified pitchers for ERA titles? Not that many. None. None. I I'm going to say none. Nobody else has had the luck that the not the luck, but the good fortune that the A's have had with injuries. And so they they had the team. They had the team. They just did not get those supplemental pieces. One guy that was a huge supplemental piece who was already on the team, Tony Kemp. He was absolutely fantastic this season, and we haven't talked about him enough. I know that he was on the show, but I want to talk about, about him again because he's been great. He had a 120 WRC plus this season. He hit 266 with a 374 on base and a 772 OPS league average on those stats. 243. So he's hitting 23 points better than league average. His on base is 60. I'm going to call it 60 points above league average. His OPS 50 points above. He's really good. He had a 120 OP, uh, WRC plus and 
if you're going for, hey, who does that compare to? Well, he's better than Javi Baez. He's better than Bo Bichette. He's better than Nolan Arenado. He's better than Tim Anderson. Uh, Javi Baez had a 119. Bichette, Arenado, and Tim Anderson all had 115 WRC pluses. And if you're like, hey, those are all really good hitters. Yeah. You know who he's closer to in WRC plus than those guys? Alex Bregman, who's also a very good hitter. He had a 124. He was closer to Alex being Alex Bregman, you know, young prime Alex Bregman than any of those other four guys. That That is a quality bat. Tony Kemp is a quality bat. And I was really looking forward to seeing him in the playoffs because he feels like that David Eckstein type that I always, that I always want on my own team where he's just that nuisance of an at bat. And he's going to come up in a big spot, just like David Eckstein always did. And it felt like Tony Kemp could have been that guy for the A's this season. Whether or not he can continue what he's doing this season and the next season, that's up for debate. We will see. Uh, I'm intrigued. I, I hope that he doesn't go anywhere because that's a that's a guy that you want right there, I think. A couple of other things. Um, I, I said that I was frustrated, and I am. And it's because ownership did not spend the money. And when, you know, they they, they let Marcus go, and they, they offered him what they offered him, you know, uh, $12 million with like $10 million deferred over one, uh, 10, one million, 10, one million dollar payments over 10 years. It's stupid. Uh, they offered him a BS contract. That's ownership. Um, and then they didn't replace him until February 6th when they got Elvis Andrews. Love Elvis Andrews. Not, not, no shade at Elvis Andrews. He was fantastic. He was brought in three weeks before spring training. Uh, he was uprooted for the team that he'd been with for 12 years and just thrown into the A's. Then they struggled in April and everybody's like, oh, this guy sucks. He was really, really good after April, I got to say. Uh, he, he struggled in August too, I think. But other than, yeah, uh, the A months screwed him over. But other than that, he was really, really good. He hit like 274 outside of the A months. So good job from Elvis Andrews, given the circumstances. Maybe he's a little bit better next year if, you know, it, his broken leg is better. Also, we had surgery. He's doing okay. He's expected to be back for uh, spring training next year. So that's something. A um, couple of other things that I want to get to before I send it over to break. Uh, Chris Bassett and Frankie Montas took huge steps into proving just how great they are on the mound. And Sean Manaya, outside of August, he was also on that same path. He had a really, really rough August. He had almost a nine ERA in August. So uh, that really set him back a little bit. But other than that one month, he was... Absolutely fantastic, just like Frankie Montas and just like Chris Bassett. Lou Trevino had a few bad weeks. He had a, a really, really bad few weeks, but it was nice to see the good Lou Trevino return. His overall stats aren't going to be great because of those really, really bad few weeks where he couldn't get three outs to save his life. But overall, he had a, a pretty good season, and maybe you can avoid that later on. I don't know if you want to bank on him being the closer next year, but... He could be a dependable seventh or eighth inning guy next year if the A's are going to be competitive. Um, and I'm 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 also curious how much 2020, the shortened 2020 season, played into some of the, the pitchers struggling at times, especially uh the entirety of the bullpen, uh, you know, with Lou Trevino and everybody. And then also Shamanaya in August and James Caprillian struggling down the stretch and needing to be removed from the starting rotation. They just hadn't pitched pitch this much. That's why I, I, I think, but that's me. Uh, th those are my takeaways. That's my eulogy of the 2021 season. Uh, coming up, I'm going to be talking about Frankie Montas's uh, Cy Young candidacy because he's got some stats, you guys, and I am very excited to share them with you. So stay locked in with Locked On A's and I will be right back. Hey, A's fans, this is Jason Burke with an incredible app everyone who buys gas needs to know about, and that is Get Upside. My listeners are making up to 25 cents for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play right now. Use promo code BASEBALL and get up to 25 bonus cents per gallon on your first fill up. That is up to 50 cents cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using GetUpside. Just download the app for free and use promo code BASEBALL to get up to 50 cents a gallon cash back on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot are making as much as two or $300 a month in cash back and there's no 
Cash. The cash gets added right into your account. You can just cash out at any time to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other great brands. Just download the free Get Upside app and use promo code BASEBALL to get 50 cents a gallon cash back on your first tank. That is code BASEBALL. And so with that, uh, I'm going to take a sip. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing the same shirt that I was wearing in the previous episode, it's the same day. I, I recorded one in the afternoon. I'm recording one at night. It's the same day. It's it's not that I'm gross. It's just that I haven't changed because I haven't slept yet. That's all. Yeah, I'm not, That's all. And if you weren't wondering that, uh, dang it. <laughs> Hopefully everybody's still in an okay mood after the A's were eliminated. I know that it's been a it's been a rough year. Just lots of bad news all the way around. And I am inter interested to see if any of the players talk about how much the relocation stuff affected them, if at all. Um, it, I, I don't know if it's going to be this offseason or when they end up on other teams, whenever that is, or when they retire because they're going to be A's forever. At some point, I would like to know. that. That's all. And I don't know what the timeline is for that, but I'll be keeping my ears open. <laughs> Anyways, let's get back into the show. <laughs> Forgot what the intro was. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to the Locked On A's podcast. If you guys are enjoying the show, make sure to hit subscribe wherever you like to hear podcasts. Follow our YouTube channel on YouTube at Locked On A's. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, follow me at by Jason B wrong side always on the wrong side uh follow me at by jason b on twitter and in the spotify green room app i'll be going live on sunday i believe i said 2 30 before forgot games start at 12 so i can actually go live at the beginning of the game at 12 o'clock noon so that'll be when i go live on spotify green room also uh make sure to follow the podcast wherever you like hearing podcasts follow us on social media at locked on days on twitter and instagram i'm at by jason b on twitter and in the spotify green room app i already said that one but it's part of the routine so here we are uh, also, again, thank you for making us your first listen of the day. You can follow us wherever you need to, to hear this each and every day. I went over the schedule before, but just in case you, you, you were zoned out, I know that I zone out when I was like on the bus or it got too loud or something. Uh, we're going to be doing five days a week, probably through the winter meetings. And then from then on, roughly three days a week until spring training starts up again. So this is your place to be for A's news each and every day. Uh, I will probably go into a little bit more detail on Frankie Montas at a future date, but for right now, let's go over his stats and why he should be considered one of the top three. I'll say top three AL Cy Young candidates. Uh, he went, well, last night's game, he went six innings pitched, gave up four hits, two runs, zero earned runs, because the defense <laughs> was... Great. Again, uh, he gave up one walk and struck out seven. He finishes the season, most likely, unless he makes a weird start for some reason, uh, with a 337 ERA. That is 15th among qualified starters in all of baseball. There's a lot of really good starting pitchers in the National League. You get your Corbin Burnses. You got your Brandon Woodruffs. You got pitchers that are also not on the Brewers who were really, really good. And to be qualified, you have to have a certain number of innings. It's like uh, 160 innings or something like that. So anybody who pitched above 160 innings and has uh, a better ERA than that, uh, they're, they're pretty good pitchers. I'll say that. They're, they're good. And he is 15th in baseball among qualified pitchers. So he had a full season and he had a really good ERA. He's really, really good. That's my point. Uh, he is also third in the American League in ERA. So all of a sudden, just, just that one stat right there, you're like, hey, in the conversation for AL MVP, right there. ERA, third in the AL. That's the case right there. He also has 187 innings pitched. That is second in the American League. So he also has a bunch of innings. Uh, there, there's a couple of guys that could probably catch him if they have another start. Haven't looked at their, you know, probables or anything like that. But he might be pushed down to third or fourth. We'll see. He also had 207 strikeouts this season. That is the second most in Oakland A's history, and that is also fourth in the American League this season, but second most in Oakland A's history, and the most since Vita Blue had 301 strikeouts in 1971. Vita Blue, that season, won the Cy Young 
and the MVP award because he was so damn good. Uh, I don't know that Frankie Montas is going to be one of the Cy Young and the MVP, but he could be in the running. I don't think that he's going to win the Cy Young. I think that he's going to be top three. And this is, th these stats are so, so good. Post All-Star break, this is where I think he can make his biggest case. Post All-Star break, 14 starts. He went five and two, which is, if you saw last night's game, that should have been a win. But the defense was not nice to him. Last week, same exact thing happened. He should have gotten a win. Bullpen blew it. Uh, he should have at least a couple of more wins. Just in recent memory, he should have been seven and two. Uh, but that's not his fault. He can't do anything about that. That's why wins are stupid. But he he went five and two, two seventeen ERA in eighty seven innings pitched. He had one hundred and two strikeouts, and his WHIP, his walks and hits divided by innings pitched. 1.03. He was really, really good the second half. And we finally saw the Frankie Montas that we've seen flashes of, but we saw it for the entirety of the season. He was healthy the entire year. He didn't get suspended. He didn't get hurt. He was on the mound, on the bump every fifth day. He was absolutely electric and everything that I've been hoping for when I draft him in fantasy baseball each and every year. This is the Frankie Montas that I've been hoping for. And I'm going to be fascinated to see what he changed. Maybe I'll have to do a deep dive into his pitch arsenal and all that stuff. But coming into 2021, it was always, he'd have two, three, four good starts and then a big blow up start. And it was just like clockwork. He'd have that big blow up start every now and then. He did not have any of those in the second half. And actually since June 21st, that was his last big blow up start. I would say he gave up, you know, a, a few runs to the Royals a couple weeks back. That was that was okay. He went like three and two thirds, gave up four runs. It's not really a blow up start. He didn't go deep, but it wasn't a blow up start. But that that June 21st one, he went five and two thirds, gave up nine hits, eight earned runs. That's a blow up start to me. He had three of those this season. You take those out. He's a much, much better pitcher, obviously. Um, he'd probably have like a roughly a two ERA if you take those out with the totality of the season that he had because he was that good all season long. And so basically since June 21st, he's been mostly six to seven innings pitched the majority of the time, six or seven innings pitch, never eight, a couple times five, but six or seven, between six and seven, maybe six and two thirds, maybe six and a third, but between six and seven innings pitched almost every start. There was a couple starts where he went a little bit shorter, but that's, that's whatever. It's fine. Uh, and then he'd also go two or few, two or fewer runs allowed and what else can you ask for from a starting pitcher each and every time out six or seven innings pitched two or fewer earned runs allowed. It's really, really good. That's, that's the case right there. He kept the A's in longer than they deserved to be in the playoff hunt because he was so good each and every time out. They only won five of his starts. I mean, they only, he only got the win in five of his starts, but it's not his fault by any means. And that's why sometimes these awards are a little bit stupid because they're like, oh yeah, this guy, they, they pitched their way into the playoffs and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, but there was a, three other guys that had to face, you know, seventh, eighth and ninth. If those guys suck, then it's not Frankie Montas's fault, is it? No, it's not. So uh, write your Congress people and let them know about Frankie Montas and his candidacy for the AL Cy Young. Uh, this is the Frankie Montas that we've been waiting for. And we finally got to see him and uh, there, there is a part of me that is terrified of that because, uh, as I'll talk about next week, uh, there's contracts coming up and so, some team control is being uh, is running out on some key players, Frankie Montas being one of them. Is he going to be on the trade block? Is this the highest that his trade value is going to be? Or are they going to run it back one more season? Are they going to be too scared to move any of these guys because they're not getting seeing the returns that they want to see because of the CBA, there's going to be a lot of labor negotiation going on this winter. There's going to be a lot of trade talk. So buckle in because it's going to get uh, fun. It's not going to be fun <laughs> by any means, but uh, we're going to we're going to try and have a good time here at Lockdown Ace. So uh, this is definitely the place you want to be for all of your ace talk. Definitely some of your labor talk. Sure. OK. <laughs> and then I'll be sure to have guests on who definitely know what they're talking about. And we'll just bounce ideas off of one another but uh coming up on the show let's let's talk about the playoffs anyway Let, let's see what chance the mariners have of actually making it now that they beat the a's 12 straight games so 
Let's talk about that. It's going to be fun. I know that it stinks that the A's are out, but it's going to be fun. So stay locked in with Locked On A's, and I'll be right back. We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back to start another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, BetOnline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head on over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up. Don't forget to use the promo code NFL100. And that is NFL, the thing that they are talking about, 100, which is your welcome bonus. You marry them together, NFL100. That's the promo code that you use to get that 100% welcome bonus. And they got everything from football to basketball to boxing to playoff baseball that does include the Oakland A's. Uh, you don't want to wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. And that's why Bet Online is considered the fastest and the easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. And it's also why the Bet Online are considered your online sports book experts. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local auto parts store to stock all of the parts that you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30 or 50 or 100% more on the same parts from a car dealership or a chain store? It doesn't make sense to me. I don't like spending more money when I don't have to. And I also like family businesses. Rock Auto, family business. They serve do-it-yourselfers online for 20 years. Rock Auto's prices are always reliably low for every customer. And to take advantage of some of these prices and what they're talking about, all you got to do is go to rockauto.com right now and see all of the parts available for your car or truck, right? Locked on in there. How did you hear about us box and let them know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. Whew, that was fun. Good time. Did I nail that one? I think I said it a bunch of times at this point. I'm very comfortable with the Rock Auto one. <laughs> ah, all right, but I'm running out of time. So let's get into it. Welcome back to the Locked On A's podcast. If you guys are enjoying the show, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media at Locked On A's on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at by Jason B on Twitter and in the Spotify green room app. If you guys have any questions for us, please send those to LockedOnAthletics at gmail.com. Um, I know that I probably should have given you guys the score to the game last night, but they lost. It didn't matter. It's another 4-2 to two loss to the Mariners. The Red Sox won. The A's are out. That's the synopsis. That, you missed it. Boo. Uh, they've also, again, lost 12 straight to the Mariners. And on the podcast that I recorded this afternoon, I was talking in the second segment, I believe, about um, some of the expected batting averages of the hits that the Mariners have taken away from the A's over the course of their, at that point, 11 straight losses to the Mariners. And that continued again last night. They had The A's had expected batting averages on three balls that were supposed to be hits, then they were not hits. 820, 730, 780. Those were the expected batting averages of balls put in play by the A's that were not hits. Would they, would they be game changers? Maybe. And that's kind of what the Mariners do. They are a savvy bunch of guys. And uh, I'm probably going to dislike them a little bit more, but they're up and coming right now. And I think that they're adorable. So go Mariners. Um, and I, I was hoping that the A's would win just this last game against the Mariners, get that monkey off their back, not lose 12 straight uh, heading into next season when that can continue. Uh, they, they didn't do that. So I, I have already circled on my imaginary calendar, May 23rd through the 25th. That is the A's first series against the Seattle Mariners. We're coming for you. It's also in Seattle. So we would literally have to come for you uh, and go on the road to Seattle. And hey, maybe that would be fun. It's around my birthday. Uh, I'll have a newborn by then. <laughs> I'll have like a five month old. I'm not, I'm not going to Seattle. Sorry guys, but, uh, I will watch it intently and hope 
that something good happens. <laughs> so with the loss, the A's are out of postseason contention, as I mentioned. This was originally going to be the first segment, but I, I still got my notes. Um, and with the win, Seattle is now a half game back of the Boston Red Sox for that second wild card spot. Uh, rundown of the standings real quick. You got the New York Yankees. They still have that first wild card spot, but they only have a one game lead over the Boston Red Sox. Both of those teams have four games to play. The Seattle Mariners have three games to play and Toronto and the Yankees have one more game left. That's on Thursday at four o'clock Pacific. So if you still like baseball, that, that would be a good one to watch. I, I would say, I think it's, is I don't, I don't know who's pitching. I'm going to say it's Barrios and Garrett Cole and go wild. Or maybe it's, I'll, I'll look it up as I'm still talking and uh, hopefully I can get you guys an answer. Um, but so you got the, Yankees and Mariners right there. Uh, Seattle's a half game back. Toronto is a full game back of Boston. So it could get really, really interesting, especially if Toronto beats the Yankees. Then oh, we'd have a four-way tie going into the final weekend. That would be amazing. I really hope Toronto wins tomorrow today as you're listening to this. That would be just utterly fantastic. Uh, I almost said a swear, too. Uh, it's Corey Kluber against Robbie Ray. I think Robbie Ray, at the eventual Cy Young, you would think, has the advantage in that one. But Corey Kluber is also a savvy veteran, so we'll see what happens. Um, also, I, I wanted to point out Seattle, three and a half games back of the Houston Astros right now. And guess how many games left they have to play? Three and a half games left to play. So there is still a chance with their elimination number at one in the AL West that the Seattle Mariners could be the overlords of the AL West, as I've been prognosticating for future seasons, but they could do it this season. For that to happen, uh, Houston would have to lose to the Tampa Bay Rays uh, today, Thursday, and the Rays just clinched the ALE, so are they going to be trying? I don't know. Do they want to try and keep the Houston Astros out of the playoffs? Maybe. Uh, so that would be interesting. So that would be that would be the first thing that has to happen is Tampa Bay has to beat the Houston Astros. The Astros did not look good on Wednesday. They've lost four out of five, I believe. And they had one big comeback win on Tuesday night to make that not five in a row. So they're not playing great baseball. That said, the other thing that would have to happen, well, two other things would have to happen, is the Seattle Mariners would have to sweep their series against the Los Angeles Angels. We've seen the Angels play. Shouldn't be that hard for them. <laughs> And we've also seen the Mariners play. I think that the Mariners are like a thousand games better than the Angels based on how they've played the A's. The other thing that would have to happen is the A's, who just got eliminated from the playoffs and may turn to some young guys, uh, we'll see, I guess, on roster moves on uh, Thursday and Friday, they would also have to sweep the Houston Astros. And I don't know that that's going to happen, especially if the Astros are going to kind of kind of try to stick into the playoffs. But hey, Stranger things have happened. That would be wild, and I kind of want to see it. It would also mean that the A's would win the season series against the Houston Astros. That would be great. Um, so that is that is what's going on. And I know that that seems very far-fetched right now. It's probably not going to happen. But if it does, if they do tie in the AL West at the end of Sunday's action, then there would be a tiebreaker game between the Seattle Mariners and the Houston Astros on Monday in Houston. I would love to see that. Mostly, I like extra baseball. And then, potentially, if there is a tiebreaker needed in the wild card, they'd have to play those too. So, yeah, it could get really crazy. And th there could be a few different, or a couple of avenues for the Seattle Mariners to take. I'd love to see them. Whether or not they make it to the ALDS, I would like them to have a home playoff ish type game. Whether that's a wild card, whether they get the first wild card, which we'll see, or whatever happens, I would love to see that. That would be a lot of fun for me. I think I just figured out that they they would not be a four-way tie. Sorry. I think that they'd still be a half a game back. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm tired. I'm going to bed. That's all that I got for you guys. I think that they'd still be back because they're half a game back Boston. Uh, Toronto would be tied with the Yankees. Yeah, Boston would be, move up. And the, yes, okay. So it wouldn't be a, a four-way tie, but it can happen by the end of the weekend. That is my overarching theme, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, I'm done. I'm done with this podcast right now. Uh, tomorrow, um, I believe, or I guess 
as you're listening to this today, I believe I'm talking to Jeff Carr and Ethan uh, Ethan Smith of uh, well, Locked On Pirates and Locked On uh, Reds uh, specifically. And we're just going to talk about uh, some of the playoff teams and who we like and don't like. And I'm going to see, I, we haven't talked about this, but I'm going to see if we can draft our playoff teams. And uh, then we just are left with two at the end of it. And we're like, hey, I guess those are who we're rooting for. Cool. Um, I think that that'd be fun where we just take two teams like uh, they, they eliminate the Cardinals immediately because they're both from the central and they, I assume, don't like the Cardinals. I would eliminate the Astros, you know, stuff like that. And then you're left with like the Brewers and Mariners. I don't know. Uh, it'd be fun. I think so. Uh, make sure to tune in for that. I don't know if we're going to be able to do the draft, but I'm going to pitch it. I'm going to definitely pitch it and we'll see how it goes. Um, but that's all that I got for you guys today. Tomorrow, uh, that, that's what will hopefully be happening. That That is my plan right now for tom- for Friday's episode is talking about playoff baseball because it's going to start without the A's next week. So uh, that's that's it. All right. Cool. Uh, subscribe to the podcast and thank you for listening to this one first on your day. Uh, if you're if you're looking for a second lesson, Locked On Bets, they are great at picking winners. Lee Sterling is the the, the winning. He, he has golden hands. I I assume because he's always right. And then your boy Q adds a lot of the fun. Um, they they do great stuff. So if you want to make some money, go listen to Locked On Bets. And uh, yeah. So until next time, go out and celebrate good times, Oakland. And I will talk at you tomorrow.